Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It's your boy, the SMT. I've got a lot of news to cover today. I want to get you guys hip to all that is going on. Different things coming out of AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. I'll actually get things started first in today's news. If you are a DirecTV customer or you are a per- uh, prospective customer considering about getting on these DirecTV services, bad news for you. All right, so the first thing, DirecTV pricing is on its way up. We are going to be seeing an increase for pricing on their services. Uh, in terms of a time frame, you can expect to see at the turn of the new year a price bump to their TV services. So as of January 2021, you're going to be seeing some prices across most of their offers. So the scale of the increases range between $1 and $9 per month. There are some other uh, things that are going on with the pricing. I know that their Showtime, their Stars, and their Cinemax offers are going to be receiving price decreases, which is pretty cool. So that's good to report on. Uh, Uverse TV is also going to be seeing programming cost increases as well. The range between five to nine to nine dollars per month for those services. And um, what I'll do is I'll kind of share with you all what that looks like. So these are the price increases that you're going to be seeing on the Direct TV price bumps. So everything from the basic choice all the way down through all the preferred extra and the ultimate premiere, you'll see where you stand if you have any of these offers. That's what's going to be happening to your pricing. If you are a Uverse customer, here's what's probably going to be happening to your pricing. Everything from the U family, the U100, all the way down to the, uh, you know, you know, through those services, that's what you're going to be seeing. The basic plan actually doesn't see a price bump. So that's good to report on. But again, always bad to report on price increases. We as consumers like to see our prices as low as possible. But unfortunately, starting January 17th, uh, you know, here, just what, what would that be, like a month and a half or so, um, maybe about two months, you're going to be seeing some price bumps there. So the reason for what AT&T is citing as the increases is due to increases in carriage fees. So for that programming, whether it's, you know, sports channels, movie channels, all the programming is on its way up. We've been seeing this happening with, you know, TV bundles and cord cutting and things like that. So they'll continue to be a problem for pricing. Uh, DirecTV pricing ranges anywhere between $97 to $197, quite premium in my opinion. But, you know, this is what it looks like. This is what TV programming has become as of 2020. Price increases always coming our way. All right, this next piece of news we've actually got coming out of Verizon. We've got a few things to actually go over. So the first item, uh, a lot of people have been asking me about the track phone acquisition, you know, Verizon getting it on prepaid. Obviously, you know, track phone is a, it's, I'd consider it a mega brand in prepaid that puts Verizon Wireless as an industry leader in terms of the prepaid market share with this acquisitions, uh, with this acquisition. Uh, the agreement is worth nearly $7 billion. It includes Verizon shares as well. And uh, those will be sent over to America Mobile in this particular deal. Uh, something to note from the CEO of Consumer Groups, um, he said, quote, prepaid has been a small area of focus up until now for Verizon. Going on to look at some more insights, CEO Hans Vestberg has been quoted as saying, not in response to the pandemic or the economic situation, uh, but we're looking to create Verizon prepaid more as a network as a service strategy. So to give you some understanding as to what exactly Verizon wants to do here, Verizon wants to be number one in the premium market as well as in the value market. So they're looking at postpaid as, you know, continued success of theirs, but now they're looking to add the value market as well. Uh, Verizon prepaid aspirations being value, uh, being a value brand and offering benefits and, and new product spaces for their brand seems really smart, adding that revenue stream. TrackPhone has about 21 million subscribers, 13 million of which are already on the Verizon Wireless Network. So this would essentially take that 8 or 9 million of those customers that are currently on AT&T or T-Mobile Access, bringing them over to the Verizon side improves their value proposition in terms of adding some ARPA or average revenue per account. This gives them additional dollars, makes them more profitable. So... The big thing now is going to be regulations. The big thing now here is getting clearance for the deal. I don't think there's going to be much stopping the deal, in my opinion. 
Um, but of course, there, anything could happen, and we've got, you know, in, in order for it to clear, and we know it's going to be happening somewhere around the turn of the new year, around you know the early part, uh, maybe quarter one of 2021. But with an administration change, there's no guarantee. So it's something we will be monitoring closely. I know that the Communication Workers of America will likely look for some protections for their members, as well as concessions that could help and benefit, you know, those types of individuals that belong to that union. So I'll be following that closely. I'll have more on this at a later time when those news become available and things start to develop more. This next piece of news, this is actually a follow-up to, you know, what we've been seeing with with uh, Verizon and Apple. They've got a very strong partnership that dates back to the iPhone 4S. And, you know, then it kind of carried on to, you know, uh, different carrier services. And then we saw, you know, Tim Cook and Hans Vestberg, the CEO of Verizon, up on the stage at the iPhone 12 release launch event. So there's definitely a good relationship there. Verizon and Apple News for you here. This is a pretty big deal in my opinion. The iPhone 12 fleet swap program is now new and ready to go for use for enterprise and upgrade program for customers. So what this program is going to allow is that entire businesses are going to be able to upgrade all their smartphones across all of their employees to iPhone 12. So they can switch from any carrier with zero upfront costs. I think this is going to be huge for the employees and the companies of those employees. Verizon is quickly becoming the business wireless carrier to have under basically all considerations. They already do have a big piece of the market share for business customers. This just kind of further uh, puts them ahead because they made it so easy for people to upgrade and switch for their services. Verizon also added uh, General Motors and Honeywell to their indoor 5G ultra wideband network customers list. They're going to be taking millimeter wave 5G ultra wideband into those facilities. This is going to be huge for companies that want or need uh, that type of network access on their facilities. And also to follow up here, they're going to be providing special tools from IBM, Jigspace, and Osiri X for iPhone 12 enterprise customers in which they're going to provide unique applications, tools, and solutions that require ultra low latency and extremely high capacity and speeds. So whether it's the case of production monitoring, machine learning, artificial intelligence, the AR training situations, automation, full manual access, leveraging you know, the LiDAR sensors that are in the iPhones, the neural engines of the phones, you know, you could see a lot of applications here for the health services, MRI and CT scanning, radiology. I mean, there's just so many different services that are going to be new that Verizon is now going to capitalize on by having those accounts. One of the things that I've said that T-Mobile needed to do was to get into these types of enterprise accounts. I haven't seen or heard anything from that yet. So Verizon seems to be gobbling up all of these business and enterprise customers. This is going to be a really big thing about what they do. So when anybody begins to question what Verizon is doing with Millimeter Wave and their 5G ultra wideband services, clearly it's not just about home 5G. It's not just about consumer wireless and mobility. It is clearly going to also emphasize business and enterprise consumers. Huge news, huge partnerships, Verizon doing big things with their ultra wideband and the iPhone 12. All right, this last little bit of news coming out of T-Mobile camp. Uh, this is some commentary from Neville Ray, who openly discussed the Verizon Millimeter Wave first strategy and how it will, quote unquote, come back to haunt them. Neville spoke to T-Mobile's coverage leadership at a recent event. Uh, in my opinion, and according to network performance, you know, looking at data, uh, there's 600 megahertz, uh, you know, I don't know, we'll just call it band 71, N71, whatever the connectivity is, is not really doing much for their capacity. I'm not really sure uh, what that, you know, is really doing for them. And, and as their marketing proceeds, what exactly they're, they're holding on to as, as they're hanging their head on that. Um, I think that what it's doing for them, obviously band 71 addresses their weakness, which is on the hierarchy of problems, which is coverage right? Uh, they seem to be really focusing on the mid-band uh, build-out, which is the 2.5 gigahertz, which offers great capacity upgrades for their customers and their network. Uh, their goal there on the 2.5 uh, 
is to have 100 million people, or 100 million pops, I should say, pops of people, uh, available on the 2.5 gigahertz by the end of 2020, and then they want this number doubled to 200 million by the end of 2021. So the first thing to note here from Neville, he said T-Mobile has dedicated low-band spectrum for 5G, unlike Verizon using DSS to claim nationwide 5G. So he's trying to emphasize that T-Mobile's doing it right and Verizon is doing it wrong. So that's the first thing he noted. Also, he went on to say that Verizon and AT&T customers will be disappointed when they open their iPhone 12 box, specifically saying that because of the limited millimeter wave connectivity, uh, quote unquote, customers are just not finding it. He went on to say millimeter wave is mythical. They promise and overcommit. Here's what I'm going to say about this commentary. Neville is selling something. He's selling T-Mobile as a brand. He's selling T-Mobile as a network. That's his his thing. His yapper is just going off the handle right here. So uh, publicly, he's always you know bashing Verizon, questioning their marketing strategy, questioning their deployment strategy, and um, honestly, he he kind of puts on this thing like he's some kind of network profit. Unfortunately for him. Based on their network performance, when we look at root metrics and we look at all the speed testing, you know, they have their places where they shine and there are locations where they do very well. But overall, the performance just doesn't back it up. So as long as he continues to, you know, come out and say these things, it's almost kind of like it falls on deaf ears. Nobody's really buying it until they see it happening. So Verizon, based on all metrics, based on customer spending, Based on people's commitments to their, you know, network access, Verizon still offers a higher performing network, whether it's on a national coverage standpoint or network reliability standpoint. If he wants to change that, it's simply not going to happen with little quotes and bashing other companies. It's going to have to require some action. So Verizon is going to continue to leverage its ultra wideband until it gets millimeter wave uh, completely, you know, matured to the point where it's you know, everywhere it needs to be for them for how they use it. And then as mid-band becomes available, we know that Verizon is going to support the consumer wireless network side with that particular connection. I know that Verizon is going to succeed in enterprise with their ultra wideband and their home internet. I know it's not going to be to scale, you know, of say like what, you know, T-Mobile is going to do with 2.5 because macro site application and so on. But, you know, he's questioning what Verizon is doing and It doesn't really make sense to question the company that's been doing it right and has been winning when it comes to having a high performing network. So I feel like a lot of this falls on deaf ears. I feel like people can see through a lot of the things he says. And again, like I said, it's our job here, the SMT Nation, those that cover all of this. I know Hector spoke to Neville and his commentary before, and, you know, Hector was very objective about it. I'm trying to do the same. Never listen to what carriers say always watch what they do and this is just confirmation of that i'm not bashing t-mobile i'm not putting t-mobile down i'm not even really putting neville down again they're trying to represent their company as the best thing since sliced bread it's simply not the case based on network performance but that can all change with the network potential that they now have with the t-mobile and sprint merger synergy so we'll follow these situations closely we'll see how they come through through 2020 and then 2021 we'll see if that can all change But hey, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below, what you think of all the stories I covered here today. I know it was a long episode, but there was a lot I wanted to cover and comment on. So drop me a line in the comments section, the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Thank you for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and a share to all your favorite social media platforms. Thank you in advance for that. Also, check out some of the links in the description box. We have the SMT Patreon page. We also have the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. And do check out the audio-only podcast available on all the major podcast platforms. And if you are new and have yet sub- have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.